call the meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good afternoon. Uh, we will first move to approval of the minutes of the meeting held June 14th. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. Uh, no discussion. Moving on to the vote. All those in favor of the approval of the minutes of the meeting held June 14th, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That is approved. No one signed up to address the board on non-agenda or agenda items. We move on to approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. No other discussion. We'll move to the motion to approve. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We have approved our agenda. Mm -hmm. Now to the good news report. Here we go. Good evening. Now that summer is in full swing, there are many parents and guardians out there who are starting to think ahead to next school year <laughs> already, right? <laughs> um, I've heard several people say July 4th around the corner, it means summer's almost over. It that panics me a bit, but I think there's still some time left. Um, you may have some questions if you're a new parent, is my child ready for the rigors of kindergarten? Do they have the skills to be in a classroom all day long? Um, the Sioux Falls School District offers, as you know, age-appropriate screenings for all children ages birth to five to ensure that our infants, toddlers, and preschoolers are on target with their learning. The cornerstone of our early childhood program, of course, is our preschool for income-eligible students and children with developmental learning needs. So Sue Parrott is the supervisor of our Head Start programs, and she's joining me tonight. Um, we're gonna do a little Q&A and uh, promote an event that's happening this Thursday, July 1st, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m at 1101 Northwestern Avenue. The information is on your screen for reference as well. And that's just across the street from the Denny Sanford Premier Center and Canaries Baseball Stadium, where the district has our central services office. So Sue, um, we'll talk a little bit about the event in just a few minutes, but um, we often hear of early childhood and Head Start. What do parents in the community need to know about this program? Do you have an hour? <laughs> Deanne and I talked about this earlier, and it was like, how long do you want me to talk? Because I could talk a very long time about what parents need to know about our early childhood program. Um, first of all, since we're funded with federal money, there's a lot of rules and regulations that come with that, and I could have brought my Head Start um, Bible with me, the Head Start Performance Standards, but I chose not to. Great late night reading, if you like that <laughs> sort of thing. But, um, to be eligible for our program, you can qualify through um, income, and the federal government sets that every year, and they tweak it every year. You can live in a neighborhood where um, a title school is at, so a majority of the children qualify for free and reduced lunches. Um, you can have a special educational need, which is identified through a screen and evaluation, and then um, you become eligible that way. Or we have a few children also that qualify through migrant funding, and those are kiddos that are identified by the state. Their parents work in agricultural, um, such as Smithfields, and they are able to also be in our program. A lot of those children are also our ELL learners, and so it's fun to have those kids as well. So definitely a, a segmented part of our population, but a very important part that mm -hmm. who may have not have had preschool right. experiences in the past. And so we wanna be mm -hmm. able to offer that to those three, four and five year olds to get them yes. on track. Yes, absolutely. So a lot of what's fun is when you go into, um, you see your little preschoolers that are in the kindergarten classrooms and it's always fun because they have this big smile on their face and they are well equipped to be in a kindergarten classroom because they've had that experience. They know what it's like to move around an elementary school. We've, um, we've helped them with their confidence and um, that readiness to learn. So it's not all about our ABCs and one, two, threes. It's a lot about that social emotional competence. 
and am I ready to tackle what's new for me as I enter this this big world of kindergarten and formal education. Right, and all the way up to graduation day, of course. Yes. So when we're talking about a quality preschool mm-hmm. experience, um, why is that so important for new learners? Well, you can hang a shingle on any house or any little place of business that says you're a preschool program. But what makes our program different is that all of our teachers are certified and many of our teachers even have advanced degrees, which is really exciting for our program. And um, the regional office reviews all sorts of data on us, things like how many of your teachers are certified, well, all all of ours are, and how many have advanced degrees, 30, over 30% of ours do, which is really exciting. Um, And our assistants, many of them also have degrees. So we're very well qualified um, with that. With that training that teachers have for early childhood, they know and understand how young children learn. It's not through sitting down and lecturing, it's through that hands-on play. And so teachers have wonderful opportunities. They come equipped to us to teach and then we give them so many ways to teach and improve that learning in the classroom. And we, we uh, um, proved that learning uh, mm-hmm. in the last couple of years. We mm-hmm. did the accreditation yes. for um, preschool, and, and that was a statewide accreditation program, mm-hmm. and all of our sites received exemplary status. They so did. there's proof that there's rigor <laughs> involved there. Yes. Um, so tell us a little bit about um, the event coming up on okay. Thursday. Who are you sure. looking for? Who are you trying to attract? We are trying to attract new families, and so those that haven't contacted us before, we know that Sioux Falls receives a lot of people moving into our community, and um, we, when we talk with people, quite frequently we hear, oh, we didn't know about your program. Well, then how did you find out? Well, we heard, we saw your signs, our yard signs, <laughs> uh, or we heard about it through our neighbor. And so we're trying to get the word out in new and unique ways. We know that with, Um, young children, sometimes it can be hard to schedule things or, you know, we may be scheduled two or three weeks out. So we like to provide opportunities during the summertime where you can just come. It's 11 to 1, okay, I know my kids have something going on at that time. I'm just going to stop by. I don't need to bring anything with me except what my income would be proof of that. And then I can just sign my kid up. So it's kind of like waiting in line to get your pool pass or something through Parks and Rec. We're going to provide that opportunity as well. And this is a, a different approach you guys are yes. taking because I know they've tried many things. Yes. Um, the the signs, um, mm-hmm. the yard signs that we have out and such um, have been one of the latest. And, mm-hmm. and uh, we're always trying to find those children who could benefit. Yes. Greatly from the program. Yes. So. And then in the near future, one of our um, SAM but the, mm-hmm. the Sioux Area Metro, I always have to make sure I have my initials right, they'll have a bus for early childhood. We'll be advertising on that as well. So we're always trying to find something new and different. All right. Well, it's a great program. And as all of you know who are um, supporters of preschool education for children, um, we're grateful for that opportunity. Mm-hmm. And we're looking for those families who um, we haven't heard from yet before yes. and who have those children who could benefit from a preschool experience. That's right. Thursday, July mm-hmm. 1st. Yep, this Thursday. 11 to 1. And you just stop on out, bring your um, income eligibility forms with you. Other than that, you don't need your no. child present. We do not. We do have some freebies, so meals for the first 50 people, and then we have some crayons and you know, all sorts of things that teachers afford, like myself. So, <laughs> and we'll that can, and that kids love, yes, right? And that kids love. <laughs> okay. Yes, they're kid approved. Very good. So that's our good news report tonight. Just wanted to um, publicly make that available to people so they have another option. Mm-hmm. We've been communicating via uh, our mass communication system and we'll be sending out reminders as well so well, thank you and obviously if they cannot make that date and time they can call the officer stop down at other times and uh, absolutely sign up so yep thank we'll you so much. take you whenever we can that's awesome. right awesome. thanks for thinking outside the box and doing something new we always are trying to we know that if children have it, that executive function especially at that younger age when they get into school they will be able to function better in a school setting and be able to ready to learn. So thank you for thank you. Thank you.
There were no new conflicts of interest presented, so we'll move on to approval of the consent agenda, items 9A through H. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, nine, items 9A through H, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That is approved. Now to the consent supplemental consent agenda, item 10A, to claims to Sanford Health. Do I have a motion to approve? So, so moved. moved. Second. I have a motion and second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That is approved with one abstention from board member Ryder. On to 10B, claims to Avera Healthcare. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That is approved with one abstention from board member Parker. On to 11A, and uh, Deb, this is your last report as an employee of the Sioux Falls School District. I just, I want to stand up and thank you for all your service to us, and <laughs> you've just been an amazing job. <laughs> you should have done it after the report. Good idea. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Well, I feel like Deanne just did a good news report. I have a good news report to bring to you tonight. Um, and that report is to share with you our elementary tier two programming that we have at seven of our elementary schools and some research that um, we did um, with the help of Mr. Morrison and his department to really look at um, where things are. So historically, um, in the district, we have um, you as a school board authorized. We start a pilot in August of 2014. We started that at Annie Sullivan and Terry Redland Elementary. And our objective, objective was to provide direct instruction to youth uh, in the area of pro-social skills and allow them to still be at their school where they could continue to develop their academic skills while working to de-escalate behaviors that were interfering in their success in that setting. We brought you data annually in the beginning so that you knew um, the results of that. And then in August 2016, you approved that we could expand that model and at that time, we expanded to Cleveland, Garfield, Cawthorn, and Hayward Elementary. And we used as sources for determining where uh, behavior data from the schools and the school coming to us saying, um, this is something we want to do, that we collectively as a staff see a need and want to make those systemic changes. In that 2016 approval, we added a behavior facility to the staffing equation with the teacher. What we had learned in those first two years is that the direct instruction provided by a teacher was important, but that we needed a support system for helping children learn to generalize those skills across the school. And if the tier two teacher was racing around the school working on that, she wasn't providing direct instruction and we weren't willing to give on that. So you approved that. In August 27th, in August of 2017, we expanded to Laurel Wilder Elementary. So those are the seven schools as we have it today. And I will tell you, those seven staffs have rolled up their sleeves and invested in how they can improve these skills for these youth and have done a great job. So at that time, the program design followed a tiered system which it still does today. So I've included a diagram of that. And I've referenced some of the research that's um, provided nationally on the importance of tiered approaches to utilizing and meeting the whole spectrum of needs at an elementary school. So in that process, there have been many program components added to meet each of the levels of those tiers. And they really have to be embedded 
across the school. It's not like there's a tier two room and that's the solution. It's about a whole staff collectively coming together and braiding a whole series of um, learning and processes together to support those students. And these seven schools have worked hard at that. One of those is staff training. Um, all of these seven schools have elected to do the Boys Town Well-Managed School Training, which provides consistent language and consistent expectations, both instructionally and from a skill um, development standpoint, which um, I think is important for a school to all be on the same speaking language in this area. So that has happened. Um, at the same time, through the curriculum study process, you approve the collaborative classroom literacy curriculum, which nicely weaves in some pro-social experiences and models that mirror some of the skills students are learning through Boys Town. So it's happening everywhere, which is what many children need and benefit from. For um, staff who are working in those more um, upper level parts of the tier, we also provide crisis prevention and intervention training, which the critically important part of that in this program is the de-escalation components and how to help children um, de-escalate before it becomes um, significantly challenging. All of these schools, you would see student assistance team or a student support team, some call it a base team, that are really working in individualized student situations to analyze and look at ways to address that. And they're um, very skilled at accessing community-based supports in the, in the second of the tiers where they're looking at counseling, they're looking at other supports in our community if it will help a family and one of these students who may be struggling. They may also make referrals to their um, evaluation team for either um, Section 504 or special education if they feel like they need deeper knowledge about what might be going on with the students. And then finally, um, they develop a consistent behavior intervention plan as you move up those tiers. So the consistent language that all children are learning now gets tailored very individualized to what's happening for the individual students. And then of course, there's how do you help generalize across environments and directly teach the skills in that tier two room. We've also layered in a data tracking and communication tool that's online for these seven programs so that the tier two teacher doesn't have to run to the fifth grade wing um, just to let them know what skills they're working on or what went on a day and vice versa. So those have been important tools to make this work. So then we get to the information gathering part of this report. So when you look at behavior data, there's a lot of different ways that can be interpreted and also collected. And so for the sake of this report, we did a survey of the seven building principles involved to say, um, how's this going for you? And um, it was refreshing to hear their results because I think back to when we started these dialogues in 2014 and 2016 and what people wanted and yet now for them to see the value of what they're doing might not necessarily be in a number but in the culture and climate it's creating in their school and for students at their school. So um, I reported to you some of the um, repeatedly heard comments from those principals and the results and important pieces they see. Um, for them, it's a part of their school culture and for many of them, it's a critical part of their culture and they've seen the results of students' progress. Um, we did review data. We looked at 18-19 data and 21-22. 
For obvious reasons, we did not compare 1920 with the quarter of school closure. We felt like it would distort what we were bringing to you. But consistently, you see positive trends in that data across levels of behavior and intensity of behavior, and where they're gradually reducing those numbers. It's not a fast overnight fix, but you can see the the fruit of the labors of staff and students um, in that improvement. So I would <clears throat> summarize that um, as a district, we've always prided ourselves on continually evaluating and looking for ways to improve our systems on behalf of children. One of those ways is to clearly have a defined and coordinated system within that elementary school to meet the diverse social and emotional needs of the whole child. For us, the tier two program has delivered that defined and coordinated system. Principals see their progress of that system for their schools and the data shows positive trend lines toward that. The journey to change behavior requires consistent and systematic practice. And it is a journey. It doesn't happen overnight. So I would ask you to acknowledge the review of the tier two program at these seven schools. And I would stand by for any questions. Thank you. Any questions for Deb? I'm just thinking, um, so for seven years, we've been working on this. Um, and so obviously, depending on the age of some of those students at the beginning of that, many of them could have moved from elementary all the way through middle school and are currently high school students. And so could you maybe talk a little bit about how the supports follow those students so that it's not just an elementary program and then they kind of have to figure stuff out when they get to that next level? It's a great question, board member writer. So um, all of our middle schools and high schools have a tier two program. That program um, is modeled somewhat um, like this, but it's probably more skill and course um, delivered than you would see in our elementary. So there may be a course at middle school on um, social problem solving or conflict management, where you're actually delivering the course for those students. In some cases, these students may go to middle school and they have a check and connect with the tier two teachers. In others, they may be enrolled in a course in middle school, and that's all looked at individually. And the same then happens in the transition to high school. Okay. So that continuum exists um, for students looking at their individual needs and where they started and where they've come to. Mm -hmm. Which I, I mean, I think that makes sense because the goal is that they would hopefully need less and less of that direct intervention um, as they got older and as they were a part of the program for longer and were able to kind of internalize and really utilize the skills that were being taught. So thank you. Exactly. With 2017 being the last year we added an elementary, what um, what data have we looked at to see if maybe other elementaries need to add um, since that time frame and so forth? Yep. In the um, last two years, one school um, has wanted to learn more about tier two. And that school's first step was to say, we should first all do the Boys Town training and see um, how that implementation of a consistent language and a framework for really looking at that exists. And so they did that um, a year ago. Um, and I would guess after they've now go into their second year doing that, you may at some point hear from them as um, having an interest in that, or maybe they'll feel like that met their need for the time being. Because you do sometimes see a significant shift just implementing a consistent language within a school, an elementary school. That probably would not make a huge change in a middle or high school, but in an elementary school. And the neat thing um, for people who don't know, we also, the Boys Town method is also used at Bridges, Horace, Mann as well. It so is. for that consistency that they are. It is, so um, the well-managed classroom is what we implement at the tier two sites. At Bridges, Horace, Mann, they implement what's called the Boys Town Specialized Training which is more intense, prescriptive, um, 
but it surely speaks the same language. So a child who has ongoing struggles in that area doesn't have to relearn a consistent language because that isn't how we want to use children's time. This all blends in with what you've seen as part of our district priorities for next year with that multi-tiered system of supports, which these schools are really kind of a leg up on that because that's the work that they've been doing for a number of years. So it, it helps us guide that work now to even take it further across our district. So these, these two things fit together. Very nicely. Yep. Well, it seems entirely appropriate as we, we've had kids in the classroom and we continue to keep them in the classroom and keep looking and improving on these social emotional development pieces. We're really lucky and that Boys Town, to the extent that they also can lean on that national research that is being done to help inform the decisions that we make here locally. So, great. Any other questions? Seeing none, do you have a motion to acknowledge the board report on Tier 2 Elementary Program? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed and sign. The uh, board report is acknowledged. Thank you. Uh, anything else for the good of the board? I just want to mention um, we will have a reception and um, acknowledgement for board member Tolkien when he's able to attend. When we know that date, we will post that as well. So that we do that. Um, seeing anything else, the next board meeting is July 12th, July 7th. We are not having a work session, and the Southeast Tech Board meeting will be moved till after the school board meeting on the 12th so those will be there so just for everybody who attends those so they have that information that will also be posted do i have a motion to adjourn so moved second i have a motion and second all those in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye aye, aye. sign we are adjourned thank you